was sad that the season's over, but um, we just had to take a little mini vacation. It's actually Super Bowl Sunday weekend, and um, the day before the Super Bowl, so we decided to go up to an Airbnb at the California Oregon border and fish the Klamath River. And um, I still get away for a three day weekend, so I can bring you the action shortly. But first, some breakfast on the patio. We're gonna go fishing right out here. So this is the setup out here. We have about 300 yards of bank, or sorry, about 100 yards of bank from the trees down to right about this patch right here. And so this is the, the only really open spot, but looking at it now, it's got a bunch of ebbs here. Um, so I'm just gonna try to fish the sections where it's kind of jutting up against rocks where you can see it's flowing at, kind of like here and right here and so other places where it gets kind of calm. So I know that fish might be pulling up in those areas. There's even a little, little dam over there. Um, so pretty much right in the middle of this where I know it's gonna be deeper. Um, it's about it's about 30 degrees today, so it is a little cold. Sun's not up yet. So we know that fish aren't gonna be surfacing. They're gonna be a little bit lower because they like the cooler water, especially this time of year. Um, see what we can do. Also had to bring the high and dry pole with us. Thanks Jordan out there. Got the hard ground stake here so that I can run a fishing pole holder if I want to or a cup holder. This telescope's up and down, but I'm just gonna be using it as a camera mount for the GoPro. Also have a chest mount as well. These are the two setups I'm running. I'm just running my bass rod with like 15 pound test on there. Um, and I'm running a little barbless spinner right here. I got a couple colors of these. This is gonna be the silver spinner on a gold right there. And then the other one I'm running is gonna be a float jig. This is like my striper rod. I have a 500 series on an Akuma. It's about eight and a half feet. Uh, I would like a little bit longer for a float, but we're gonna be running a pink worm with a bead on another barbless hook with a split shot in the middle. And I got about three feet there to a bobber. We'll see. What I really wish now is that I had braided line on here because this is just about 25 pound test and I have a mono attachment down there and it doesn't float that well. When you're in a fast moving river like this, it takes the line. So when you're float fishing, I'm trying to get it out there to, to the spots where it's not fast moving currents. And it feels like every time I cast out, I get the line right here. Um, stuck in those currents and it takes my float faster into those currents and i want to keep it on the other side of the river now it'd be nice if i had waders but i don't i'm just rocking muck boots um so i can get there and it's also very very cold water so i don't really want to stand in it and fast moving um, other than that like i would run mono if i were to do this and i would also have a little bit heavier of a setup out here because i am running that little split shot which brings it down a little bit but not too much and um I really want to get to those those easier areas so that I want that bobber to stick straight up. And when I have that bobber stick straight up, I know I can just kind of leave it, leave the bale open and then just point my rod at it as it goes. And when I keep my rod at it, it just stays nice and upright and I can kind of even jerk it a little bit too and give it more line. And even when you jerk it just a little bit, if you have a longer rod, like over a nine foot rod, it's more sensitive. So you can bring that bale up and down. That would be ideal. I see a fish right there. Let's see if we can get at him. I see one. See how that bobber is up and down? Probably can't see it, but. See, now, now that bobber is just getting taken into the current now that I have my bail open and the line's getting pulled into it. 
but that was cool. I just saw a fish on top water. It was just kind of swimming along. And now I gotta bring it back in because the current's getting a little hairy. But promising, seeing fish, that was cool. All right, so I snagged up on the rock over there. So I came back inside because it's like 20 something degrees. And just to tie it, because my hands were cold. So I retied this. I have a leader here. This is my 25 pound test. I have my bobber with a lead weight here. I have about a foot and a half or so of leader on 15 pound mono to the first worm jig that I have here with a barbless hook. See the background there, and then I have another about foot and a half or so of leader to another worm jig. So I have about total four feet or so of a leader, and I'm running two worm jigs to um, hopefully cover more ground on the water. First cast of my jig right here. It's about five feet long actually, so hopefully it doesn't snag up. I'll try to just cast it into the slack water here. And it's immediately getting taken by the, the current. And caught in that current is not helping. Wish I brought my waders and I just walk right across and fish that side. Note to self, when you're fishing rivers, bring waders. Switched over to the spinner again. I was flowing it down there a little bit and uh, had to move up the river a little bit there. But uh, this this current just right here, right in front, just takes everything, takes your line. Um, it's really like not fun to fish. No offense to the people that we're staying with, the Airbnb owners, but their spot is not the best for fishing, um, only because of this current so close to the bank. If it was on the other side of the bank, it would probably be amazing. That's where I saw that fish at. Um, and then the neighbors on both sides, they don't have too much of a current right here, back on the other side over there. Um, but, you know, I'm just still trying to cast it out and, you know, run the spinner, keep it off the bottom, get a decent little pace going here. But I am going against it and it's starting to not look so good. Oh, hey, my dog's coming up. What are you doing? What are you doing, we? Come on. Go back. <laughs> All right, so I changed up the setup a little bit because that current right there is just too swift moving. So I'm just gonna try and drop it like right here, about 15, 20 feet out and just let it sit. And I have my bench our bowl is pretty handy, huh? Put it in there and I read the whole thing up. So have a so the bead on there, still have my double hook set up, but I just put some power bait on the hook. I have like a number two octopus hook and some power bait. And then I had the leader up there that I weighted down very heavily. There's a few pieces of good sized lead shot and then I have a split shot up there to hold it in place. So just gonna drop it in and see what happens. She's like, Dad, what are you doing? Put it in there. Have a bell on it and then I just ran it this line all the way like right there so we'll just see what happens just let it sit for a while but uh I've never been to Oregon before so we're gonna head up to Oregon why not
made it home just in time for me to throw one more line out right here. I already have this going on with the power bait. And then I'm just gonna throw a spinner a little bit because why not? I got a bell on there. What time anything happens? I got my two rod endorsement for California, so why not? You know it's cold when your net is all frozen over. Everything's frozen over. Tackle box. <laughs> but I already got everything set up. All I gotta do, walk down here, picked up my iced over rod. Jeez, look at those ice crystals on the, that's crazy. It is 25 degrees right now, so. I don't expect, expect much less, but walk down, pick it up. First cast of the day, right here. Now this is gonna look super weird, but I figured out a way to get across that little channel and actually fish the other bank. I had to put more weight on it. So what I did was I hooked up a half ounce lead sinker here which helps me get all the way across the channel but that means i had to put more float on it so i know this looks really weird and inappropriate but these are the only bobbers i had left so it could actually float and i could still run my pink worms here my double worm and it's actually been helping me get across the channel i'll show you And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and fish that whole section of the bank and I'm gonna get it across. I'm gonna keep the line out still. I'm gonna let the current right here take my floating line, keep the bale open and it's gonna slowly float it that way just from the pressure of it. When it gets to the point where I think I should start reeling it in because I can't get it back that way, I'm gonna flip the bale and I'm gonna pull it back. So let that line drop. It's already floating down there. It's kind of straight across that way. Little twitches here and there. It's still floating pretty good. Not straight up and down, but it's floating. And then it's just slowly moving at the pace of the river this way. So I'm keeping my rod tip at it. here and there following the river and it's getting to that point where it's going to start getting close to flipping it i'm going to pull the slack out and i'm going to start reeling it in I think that i just discovered that might work is if i get it across this little fast flowing part right here and i actually flip the bale immediately and not let the line touch it i can keep it where i want it to so it's going to look like this Put the bail, not let the line hit that fast moving current. My hand right now is straight up and down. I'm holding it pretty much as high as I can. That rod tip is probably about 14 feet in the air. And it's just floating there. That that bobber is just sitting there. I'm gonna try and control that line a little bit just by, by reeling it ever so slightly as I need to. I'm keeping that line out of that current. It's still floating a little bit towards me, still floating towards that current but I can keep it out on that other side for much longer if I do that. Or I know the fish are at. We saw one fish jump pretty much straight out in my rod tip over here yesterday. We were not expecting it. And then um, I saw one over across there yesterday too, yesterday morning. So we've seen a couple fish. We know that they're here. It's just they're not on my worms.
So walking back up the hill and her neighbor over here, um, just talked to him for a little bit, didn't even ask. And he's like, if you want to go over there, there's a gate you can walk through and you could fish the end of our property. Okay. Um, because all of this is too swift moving and over there, it's not moving at all. It's nice and easy to fish, I guess. He says it's a great honey hole. So, um, I just got permission to fish a place without even asking. I'll see you there. All right, here we go. First Back to the regular uh, no sinker no two bobbers just the regular one bobber and then my two pink worms set up here um, I don't need to cast as far I really just need to like maybe 20 yards out but I'm covering this area of the bank right here um, that is just too craggy over there and I would like to get underneath in that shade but it ain't happening that's about 45 yards or so um, and then plus I have all this extra turbulence essentially um so i can if i can get it upstream i could just keep the slack in there ever so slightly but uh make sure the line doesn't take or the, sorry the river doesn't take my line too much and pull it too quickly and uh have that bobber up the whole time that is my goal here i'm only casting like 20 yards this is even a what is this like a some sort of like muscle shell. There's muscles in the river, I guess. Awesome. Put that right back where it was. All right, so I'm back on top of the dock up here. And I'm gonna try to fish the slack water right here, all in front. It's kind of jetting through this rock and then coming back in this way right here. I gotta watch out for this brush though. Uh, if that wasn't there, it'd be perfect. I could fish all that right in front, but I can't. So I'm gonna try and cast roughly over it Maybe come down a little bit this way as well, and then try to keep my line out of it, and then make sure I can kind of finesse this area a little bit. Let's see if that, let's see if that works. Bring it back this way, in the slack water. Bobbles up and down. Get a little more line here. Control it with my hand. Push the bell, tighten it up. There we go. Now my bobber's just kind of just setting there. It's in, it's in water that's not really moving that much. So if I could just kind of pull it through, I could see the worms. I could slowly maybe even jig it a little bit, give it some twitches. Now I'm up against this slack water right here. And then I'm starting to come back. There's also like this steel braided cable. I have to watch out for that. I don't know what that anchors to. But there we go, cast two. I gotta watch out for all this right here as well because it's all kind of brushy. So I gotta do like a sideways fast cast here. I'm just sitting in the slack water right there. Go back a little bit. Setting in the slack water. Let the bobber do the work. Worms are kind of coming back around, they're kind of floating this way. Jig a little bit, let it sit, 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 sit. I see a fish right there. I see one. See if I can do the same exact thing I just did. That was so cool. It didn't hit my line or anything, but it was close to those worms. Uh, 
I'm chilling in that sloth garter right next to the plant. Now I'm on this. All right, I figured it out. Let's get it up there again. Really gotta control that line. Okay, now I'm sitting, I'm sitting, I'm sitting, I'm sitting right next to that plant. That's sticking out. I think I just got a nibble. Let's try it again. There's a fish there, I believe. Try to go this way with it. Get in that slack water. Stay away from that rock. I run out a little bit. I'm in this slack water right here. Let's bring it back through here against this rock. This is really difficult. Learning a lot today. Well, that's enough fishing, no catches. It's almost time for the through bolt though. I remember to relax. Relax. Don't you love places that, uh, that tell you what to do? Like, like when you have friends and together, our favorite place to be is the kitchen. Our best days are spent fishing. Well, that'll about do it for our stay up here at the Klamath River. It's about six hours away from home. And I decided to come up for a three day weekend and uh, made the best of it. Didn't catch any fish, but it's a lot of fun with Sydney. Great little adventure away from reality with the dogs. And uh, see you next time.